All right, good evening. This is Quintus Curtius here back again with another podcast. And the subject of this podcast is going to be how to destroy your business, how to implode your business. And it's pretty much a case study or case explanation. And I got the idea for doing this uh, recently. We were we were talking about revolvers on Twitter, and I just started to think about Colt Manufacturing, Colt Firearms, the company, and how they single-handedly ruined their brand and basically imploded their business uh, in the 80s and 90s to such an extent that they eventually had to be bought out by the Czech company CZ. How did that happen? How did that happen? How could it be that a iconic American company that was literally synonymous with the Old West, Colt revolvers were almost synonymous with uh, oh, the winning of the West and uh, the early 20th century, the gangster era, and things like that. H how could they have completely just lost their way and essentially turned a foolproof business into nothing. How, how, how did this happen? Well, let's recap. Like so many things in life, it progressed in stages with mismanagement and absolute cluelessness on the part of whoever was running the show there. And again, this is just my opinion. You can go look up on the internet. You can go look up on Wikipedia uh, the history of uh, Colt firearms, and you can decide for yourself. This is just my thoughts. But uh, to understand really how this happened, let's start at the beginning. I mean, Colt firearms, I think, was uh, founded in the 1850s, 1855, somewhere around there. And they were one of the premier, maybe the premier, uh, firearms manufacturers in the United States. And they produced iconic uh, weapons. I mean, just in revolvers, you had the single action army Colt. You had, um, oh, just, you know, in the 20th century, you had the Colt Python, the Colt Detective Special. I mean, Colt revolvers were, were used by law enforcement. They were used by the general public. They were, they were known for their smooth triggers and their uh, reliable functioning and the overall quality of manufacture. And in the um, in the automatic business, you know, you know the the uh, the uh, Colt was manufacturing the uh, the M nineteen eleven, the the forty five, the iconic forty five automatic pistol, which was used in both World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, had many many decades of service, and they also manufactured the M sixteen when it came out. But anyway, it was a very successful company. Uh, but, like so many things, when you don't understand your customers, when you don't, when you don't take an interest in what is going on around you, when you are clueless about the value of your brand, the value of your your company, your your uh, your identity, you will lose your way. You will eventually lose your way, and the results can be catastrophic. And. My understanding is that after World War II, Colt obviously produced a tremendous number of firearms during the Second World War, but they still emerged from the Second World War with financial difficulties, apparently because of mismanagement, according to Wikipedia. Uh, but they did see a resurgence of popularity in and profitability, presumably, in the 1950s and 60s and 70s when they kept putting out their mainstay products, their revolvers and their automatic pistols, you know, the M1911. And, um, you know, they were, they were very successful. I mean, Colt revolvers all through the, the 60s, 70s, uh, were 50s, 60s, and 70s were known for their reliability, the smooth functioning, the smooth triggers, all that stuff. But then... For reasons that are never have never really been explained, 
Colt suddenly decided that revolvers were obsolete and that they were not going to produce them anymore. And essentially in the 80s and 90s, they stopped manufacturing pretty much everything we wanted, everything the public wanted. Their iconic revolvers, the, the Detective Special, the Python, uh, other Colt revolvers, um, they just stopped making everything. And they decided to focus exclusively on government military contracts because they were making the M16 rifle for the U.S. government. And they were obviously uh, very successful at that. And they churned out numerous, numerous M16 rifles. Uh, but they thought they could just stop revolver production and just let it go. And, just, and so what they did, they eventually just abandoned the playing field, so to speak, to Smith & Wesson, to a rival company. And Smith & Wesson uh, realized that, uh, hey, there's still a market for, for revolvers. It may not be what it was, but there are diehards out there who like them and want them and enjoy them. And they may be out of fashion temporarily, but they're going to come back at some point. So Smith & Wesson, very intelligently and very shrewdly, I think, maintained their revolver lines and uh, stayed in the game while Colt just withdrew itself from the game. And this strategy turned out to be an absolute disaster because what happened was eventually the government contracts dried up or things changed or circumstances changed. They put all their eggs in one basket and uh, they started to experience a just terrible uh, decline in popularity and in, uh, you know, uh, satisfaction uh, of the public. You know, people don't like it when you ignore them. And it's, uh, it's really shocking because it just tells you just how clueless Colt was about the value of its brand. I mean, the, the Colt revolvers were were, as I said, iconic. And to just give that all up and say, well, we're, we're just going to focus on government contracts, that would almost be like Harley Davidson saying, hey, we're, we're going to stop ma manufacturing motorcycles and we're just going to make carburetors and engines for the government. People would think, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you destroying your company? Don't you know that customer loyalty is everything? And don't you know that that uh, when you just give up your primary um, iconic status like that, there's no going back. I mean, these are these are things, it's just shocking to me because these are things that I, you would think are so fundamental and so basic. A child could, could advise a company president on this. You don't have to be an MBA to figure this out. This is common sense stuff. And I just don't understand how... Someone in the boardroom there at Colt in the 70s or 80s didn't just stop and say, hey, wait a minute, is this a good idea? You know, is this, are, are we really doing this right? You know, so Colt eventually tried to figure it out. They eventually got back into the revolver game back in the, um, the 2000s, but it was almost too late by then. I mean, if you go to, and the other thing is their, their, their prices are always a little bit higher in some cases, significantly higher than Smith & Wesson. And frankly, I don't think that their product, in many cases, is that much significantly better that justifies the price. I've owned a couple Colts. I still, I've owned the, um, the, uh, the uh, Colt uh, King Cobra Target. It's a 357 Magnum revolver. I have the uh, Colt Cobra. It's a 38 snub nose. I like it. It's a, it's a great, uh, great uh, concealed carry gun. Um, because triggers are, are very nice, but you know the you know uh, is it is it better than a Smith and Wesson? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, they've Colt has belatedly tried to get back into the revolver game, but you know their most of their stuff is just not not uh, you know their website is filled with models that you can you can't get you can't buy. Uh, so they're still having problems. They're still having problems. And I, I guess the company was bought out by CZ back in, I don't know, 2020 or so, somewhere around there. But, uh, you know, someone should really do a study on this. It almost would be a good topic for a business school 
I don't know, study or, or uh, you know, seminar or something, how, how to just torpedo your own business. And, you know, it's not only Colt that's done this. I mean, they're maybe the most extreme example, but there have been other iconic American brands that have just not understood their customer base, and they've done things to absolutely cut their own throat right in front of their customer base. Some of you listening to this may not be old enough to remember this uh, debacle back in the 1980s that uh, Coca-Cola um, decided suddenly out of nowhere, just announced that they were going to stop making their, um, or they were going to change the formula of their, their soft drink. It was going to be new Coke. And everyone was like, what the hell are you talking about? There was literally an uproar. And I mean, it, it, it was a, a huge, huge scandal. And, Co and uh, Coca-Cola had to eventually back down and bring back the traditional formula, which it's now called Classic Coke. New Coke, I think, is vanished. You can't find it. You can't find it. I haven't seen it in decades. I remember tasting it, New Coke, and it was very, um, very odd. It was. It tasted a lot like Pepsi, you know. So it was like, it was almost like some knucklehead in the boardroom said. Our formula is is considered too old fashioned. It's considered too passe. We got to be more like somebody else. We got to be more like Pepsi. We got to be more like whatever. And so they just uh, threw in the towel and just decided to go with the flow. And you can't do that when you have an iconic brand, because people want the permanence. And people want the stability of knowing that what they grew up with is always going to be there. It's comforting in today's world. And this is the thing that these nerds that run these companies never seem to understand. Leave things alone. You know, if you want to focus on something, focus on delivering a better product, focus on improving your delivery services or staying you know, current on whatever the supply chain, but leave the essentials of your product alone. Don't just throw things overboard like so much ballast when you think they're inconvenient because your people will punish you for it. They will punish you. And Colt Firearms is a, a great example of what happens when you don't appreciate your own product, when you don't understand what you have, and when you make absolutely terrible business decisions that eventually uh, end up um, just uh, coming back to haunt you. So that's it. So what is the lesson? What is the takeaway? The takeaway lesson is, number one, you better, you better know what you're producing. If you, if you have a business, you better know, and whether that business is uh, producing a product or a service, you better know what you're delivering. To your people you better understand what it is that you have know what you have okay if you have an emerald and you think it's a handful of sand you're in big trouble because you don't know what you have on the other hand if you have a bunch of rocks and you think it's a diamond you've also got problems so number one you need to know what you have and number two you have to be in tune with what your uh, what your customers or what your clients want Okay, people want stability. They want permanence. They want assurance. They want to know that the sun is going to rise every morning when they get up and it's going to look the same as it always did and that they can count on the fact that what they grew up with is always going to be there. And when you start changing things or tampering with the special sauce formula, you are threatening their stability in many ways. It feels like a personal attack. To them okay so do not listen to these uh, nerds or these consultants or these advisors who tell you to do this and do that and we got to have a great new marketing campaign um, it's not a good idea and another most uh, a glaring recent example of that was with uh, uh, Budweiser remember that last year 
I'm not going to go into that that uh, that disaster, but uh, that's another example of how idiotic decisions made by clueless dorks who don't understand things can end up being very, very harmful to a business. So that's the takeaway. Know what you have, know what you're doing, know where you're going, and respect your customers, respect your clients, and respect yourself. Realize that Colt should have realized that we didn't get to where we are because of some flash in the pan. We got here because our forebearers since 1855 produced a reliable, good product over and over and over again that saw service in every major war. And maybe it wouldn't be a good idea to tamper with that. So just some thoughts. Until next time, I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.